to the witnesses here for laying out a lot of the different threats that are out there. Uh, since a lot of the things that were talked about uh, uh, have been raised already, I want to kind of come at this from a slightly different angle. Mr. Pottinger, uh, I know you came and spoke in front of the Congress last year, and you spoke at a hearing condemning January 6, and you said it harmed our national security. And there was a line that you said that really stuck out to me. You said, quote, emboldened our enemies. And you said that it fed, quote, a narrative that our system of government doesn't work. First of all, I just want to say thank you for saying that. And second, I just want to kind of get at this. It sounds like you're saying that a critical part of our success in our competition is to show that our democracy works, that it's strong. Is that right? Am I, am I getting the right sense from you? I agree with that, yes. So, so one thing that I'll just say here is, look, right now we have before us in Congress a lot of big decisions that we're trying to deal with. So I guess I would ask you, would you also say that if we in this room are not able to get our work together and solve some of these challenges, Let's say that we end up defaulting on our national debt if we can't get this showdown on the debt ceiling done. Would you also say that that would feed into a narrative that our system of government isn't working well? Well, I, I think that people understand that democracies are messy. Um, it's, it is uh, democracies that aim high don't always reach the North Stars that we guide ourselves by, but it is the process of trying to create a more perfect union. It doesn't mean that we always uh, reach perfection, we strive for it. Um, if the democratic process is, follows rules and follows traditions and that there is respect uh, that's shown, I think that, that people understand that um, uh, that it's not always going to look pretty. Yeah, I, 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 I get that, and I think you point out correctly that if it does stray into dangerous territory and break those rules, that that's a problem. But what, what I'll just get at, just you know, for my couple years that I've been here in Congress, things are broken here. We have a level of dysfunction here. And the reason I raise this is that I, I want us on this committee to to try to recognize that this dysfunction in our democracy right now, that this is a national security problem too. And that we have deep global consequences if we are not able to solve problems amongst ourselves. We are certainly not setting a good example for how democracies can go. And when we see some of the quotes that you raised earlier about, uh, about China talking about Western decline, you know, we gotta make sure we're not feeding into that. We gotta make sure we're not making it easy for them to do their job in terms of being able to spread that propaganda about our own country. So that's something that I just hope that we can meditate on and, and, and try to commit to ourselves, not only in this chamber and in this committee, but across our Congress and recognizing that this isn't just a battle between two political parties. The dysfunction between us is causing space for the CCP, for China, to be able to gain strength globally and push that kind of narrative. Mr. Pottinger, when you talk about China and, and some of the actions that are out there, I share concerns about the threats, but I will say that in the six principles that you outlined in your testimony, a lot of them felt to me very reactionary. I wanted to kind of give you an opportunity here because I thought Mr. Paul's comments were very strong here. That, that what was missing from your testimony was about you know, these questions about investing in our own economy, about healing our democracy, about building the kind of coalition that we need. We cannot take on the CCP alone. So I just want to want you to kind of expand on this, and, and are those as central to those six points that you raised? Certainly they are. I think that our, our alliances and our example uh, are one of the greatest assets that we have. And of course, during my time in office, I, I spent um, a massive amount of time <laughs> cultivating and, and uh, nurturing those, uh, those alliances. And I, I think it's paid off very well. Um, uh, I, I think that the main thrust of what I was trying to get through with the testimony today was just to open people's eyes to the fact that right now, the Chinese Communist Party is the protagonist because we've been uh, complacent. Mm -hmm. uh, we've uh, and, and and before we can seize the initiative, we have to react to the fact that our national interest has been deeply undermined over the course of of the last uh, quarter century. And it, you heard a lot of testimony about that tonight, and saw some very good charts and graphics about that. 
I want us to take the initiative. First, we have to actually follow through and recognize that Xi Jinping is the protagonist, that we are not seeking a Cold War. One was already, uh, has been waged against us for the last several years. And I, I don't relish a Cold War. I certainly don't want a hot one. I think that we, uh, it's incumbent upon us to, to, to try to deter uh, a hot war, now that we're already seeing proxy wars just, waged against uh, our and, allies. And, and I'll close here, but I, I just want to say uh, I agree with a lot of what's been said about addressing these threats that, that we're facing, about fixing the vulnerabilities within our own economy and our own country. But I just want to express that I really do believe that the defining factor that will shape how we fare in this competition very much comes from this idea of will we as a country get our act together? That can we heal this democracy and can we fire on all cylinders going forward? And I really do believe that we can still do that and I'm hopeful that this committee will play a role in doing so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Banks is recognized for five minutes. We've already discussed fentanyl, the leading cause of